Hi, today's recipe comes from the Azor Islands. I finally got a chance to visit the beautiful Azor Islands, specifically San Miguel. Had a great time exploring the island, hiking, eating lots of food, and I discovered a condiment there that obviously a lot of Azorians know, but my family's from Madeira. It's something we don't see there, and it's pimenta moida. It's a pepper sauce that you see served, I think every single restaurant we went to, they served it, often with fresh cheese. All you need for this sauce is bugs. Not these kind of bugs, these kind of bugs. Pimenta moida is a sauce that's fermented. It goes through a fermentation process called lactobacillus fermentation, where it's converting sugar into lactic acid and carbon dioxide. So in the same way when you make wine, yeast converts sugar in the grape juice into alcohol and CO2. In this fermentation, the lactobacillus bacteria, which luckily for us is pretty much everywhere. It's in the air, it's on all the vegetables. And this bacteria converts the sugars that are present in the peppers into lactic acid and carbon dioxide. You'll see in this recipe, there's a lot of salt that's used. The purpose of the salt is to keep the bad bacteria and molds in check while the lactobacillus fermentation is taking place. So the salt, it has a little bit preservative effect, but really what's making this last for up to a year in your refrigerator is that conversion of sugar into acid. And when you lower the pH, the, the US FDA recommends for these fermented vegetables, the pH be below 4.6. And that's what happens is the, this fermentation occurs, the pH begins to drop. When that pH drops, other molds, like important ones like botulism you don't want in there, and other bacteria can't replicate, and so it's safe to eat. And the lactobacillus, which is a probiotic, which we hear about so much nowadays, it's actually very salt tolerant. Most of these recipes I see range from about 2.5% to 7% salt. And with pepper mashes like this, they are a little more prone to mold, so they're a little bit higher in the range. I'm going to make mine about 4% salt. And to give you an idea, seawater is about 3.5% salt. There's a lot of different peppers that are used in the Azores to make this. A lot of times a sweeter pepper is used along with a hot pepper. So you could use something like a bell pepper or... I believe often they'll use what you call shepherd peppers or Hungarian peppers, and you want them ripe. Almost all peppers, they're green when they're unripe. A red bell pepper is just a ripe green bell pepper. So you want to get ripe peppers. And then for heat, you could add in a few other peppers. I have serranos here from my garden, and so that will provide some of the heat, and that's just your preference of choice there. I'm going to use a pH meter. When I used to make homemade wine, I had this pH meter that was necessary to make homemade wine. You don't need a pH meter, but since I have it, I'm gonna use it to demonstrate the pH in the beginning of the process and the pH after that lactobacteria converted the sugar into acid, and you'll see that the pH drops and brings it to a safe level, which acts as a preservative and transforms a lot of flavors. First step, you wanna wash the peppers. Next step, I'm gonna chop up the peppers to process them in a food processor. A lot of recipes you'll see, they use um, a sausage grinder. Get out the seeds. And depending, if you're using a, a sausage grinder, you probably could leave it in strips and just feed it through the grinder. This fermentation process, this is the same thing that they use for like kimchi, for sauerkraut, all those are lactobacillus when they make cheese, yogurts, lactobacillus. So it's, it's something that's been around for thousands of years, converting the sugar into lactic acid and preserving food. You know, because obviously in the Azores and even in the US, a lot of Azorian families will get together. It's harvest time, you have all these peppers, you can't eat them all at once, so you preserve them using this method. When working with hot peppers, either you want to use gloves or be, be very careful not to touch your eyes, not to go to the bathroom until you thoroughly wash your hands with soap and water. Again, the salt ratio can range anywhere from about 3% to 7% salt. I'm gonna use 4%. So the easiest thing is if you have a scale, weigh your chopped peppers in grams and then multiply by 0 0.04 and that'll tell you how many grams of salt you will need. If you don't have a scale, I'm just going to weigh out a cup so you know about how much salt to use per cup. And so one cup of chopped peppers is about 130 grams.
So, and 130 grams times 0 0.04 is five grams. So, which is a little less than a teaspoon. It'll be close enough for every cup to use about one teaspoon of salt. So I am at 1,400 grams of peppers. So that's about three pounds of peppers I have. 56 grams, so I'll weigh out my salt. 56 grams comes out to be about three tablespoons of salt. Okay, now we'll grind up all our peppers. You could put a little bit of the salt in as you go. The ideal temperature to ferment these peppers is between 60 and 75 degrees. If it's closer to 60 degrees, you probably could let it ferment for like four to five days. If it's about 75 degrees, probably three days is sufficient. Like always, it's important to taste. And mainly here, I'm gonna to stick to 4% as the salt concentration, but I wanna get a sense of the heat. Wow. You know, I probably only used by weight, I probably had for sure less than a half pound of Serrano's. And that's pretty spicy. So now it could be fermented in any glass or porcelain container. You probably don't want to use like metal because the acidity might react with some metals and the less oxygen, the less chance of you have getting mold. And why that's important is because right now, lactobacillus is starting to go to work, but it's not really making any carbon dioxide. And because there's no carbon dioxide in there, even if it's covered, there's oxygen that's reacting with with other bacteria that could cause some spoilage. So that's why we're gonna cover it. And lactobacillus is what they call anaerobic. It does not need oxygen. It prefers not having oxygen. So, you know, you could cover it well and keep oxygen away and the lactobacillus is gonna be perfectly happy. But the less oxygen that's around the top of this in the first day, the, the less chance of other bacterias multiplying. All right, next I'm just gonna put it in my fermentation vessel. It's going to, it'll keep on fermenting more and converting sugar into more acid, really until you put it in your refrigerator, then that low temperature really curtails the production of acid. Okay, now I'll just take a pH reading to give you an idea of what it's at before fermentation. The, P, the pH of this pepper mash is about 4.3 and you'll see it should drop as the fermentation starts. If you're using lids, you just could put the lid on loosely to let the gas escape. So that is it. I'm gonna leave this for three to five days and get back to it. This is the fourth day of fermentation. Each day I like to give it a stir just to push down those solids that have floated to the top back down into the acidic environment. You want to leave a little bit of room, a little bit of headspace on the top of your fermentation vessel because it will rise in volume. What happens is the solids of the peppers, as the bubbles form from the CO2, they push those solids up. So you can see in this time-lapse video, this is a 10 minute time-lapse. So in only 10 minutes, you could see the solids rose by about a full inch. And normally in my vessel, they would rise as much as three inches. So leave a little headspace. If you want to check out another video that I have from the Azores, very traditional, check out my Holy Ghost Swoopish video. Okay, it's been six days since I started this process and it is done. It actually finished, I would say in five days, but on the, on the fourth day, it was still pretty vigorous. The, the bubbles that were being produced and one way you could tell, again, that's why I suggest even if you're making a huge batch of this and you're using like a ceramic container or a plastic tub, it's a good idea at least to use, put some of it in a see-through jar so you can see the activity. Because this is a live product and depending on the temperature, how much lactobacillus was in there to begin with, probably how much sugar is in the peppers, it could vary on how long it takes to complete. And a couple signs, is bubbles. So if you still see bubbles in your mixture, you know it's still fermenting vigorously. And also what happens while it's fermenting, those bubbles cause the solids to rise up. So if, say, I stir mine once a day, you'll see the bubbles will separate the solids from the liquid. And when it's complete, I just mix this up. You can see it's one homogeneous mass. There's no separation of the solids. So that way I know it's done. And when I say it's done, the vigorous part of the fermentation is done. I mean, this, I'm sure there's still some activity of lactobacillus going on. This is 
a live probiotic in there. So if I left it out, it would continue to acidify a little bit. On the last day when I took the pH measurement, the pH was about 3.7. So that's a drop of about 0.4. What that 0.4 represents is more acid, 400% more acid. So it's not insignificant. A pH is a logarithmic scale. So a pH of three versus four isn't just an increase of one. It is 10 times or 1000% more acidic, which means less spoilage. Um, another thing you'll see in recipes, you can see on the back of this bottle I purchased in the Azores, they use this acid. And a lot of people will add additional acid to the pimenta moida and think of it as an insurance policy because the, the more acid, the lower the pH, the more stable it's going to be. And a pH below 4.6 is pretty shelf stable and considered safe and you could keep in your refrigerator. But even a higher acidic environment or lower pH will make it even more shelf stable. Another thing you'll see in recipes is for about every cup of pimenta moida to put about a tablespoon of olive oil on top. And what that does is that is a barrier between the oxygen. So again, just helps protect it a little bit. I have a reading of 3.6 right now. And again, you do not need a pH meter for this. You could be sure after the fermentation that the acid level has risen enough. But you could see that went from 3.6. This made a total of about six cups. So three pounds made about six cups. I'm actually adding one full tablespoon per cup. And you could see already that went from 3.6 to 3.5. And that's it. So now I'm just going to fill up some jars I have around the house. And even after, you know, it's gone through the vigorous fermentation, you want to leave a little bit of headspace in your containers because it, it could continue to ferment and cause a little pressure in your, in your glass. When I was in Azores, quite often the consistency of the pimenta moida would vary from a little bit more liquid to a little bit, some of them were even almost thick enough to spread with a knife. So if you want yours thicker, you could, before you add in any vinegar, strain it like through a really fine mesh sieve and just allow it to sit and allow some of the water to drain out. If you want it thicker, then add some vinegar back to it. But that's just a matter of preference. However you like it, you do you. So thanks for joining me. It tastes delicious. I've already had it on some fresh cheese. Give it a try. Now go cook for someone you love.